Morning, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, the news has just dropped. Kinahan Cartel Enforcer pictured as he's led from his Costa del Sol bolt hole in cuffs as his wife gives the middle finger. A top Kinahan Enforcer is led away from his Costa del Sol bolt hole in cuffs with his wife giving the birdie. Bald Johnny Morrissey was wearing a pair of garish yellow pattern shorts when he was picked up by an international force of cops, including a member of the Guardi. His arrest is a devastating blow to wanted Daniel Kinahan's crumbling mob. The Manchester, uh, Manchester raised Irish expat smiled initially after being surrounded by cops and put in handcuffs. Yeah, of course. He was happy that he was being arrested and not being whacked. But his grin turned to a grimace as he was led away and he tried to hide his face when he saw press photographers waiting. His wife, Nicola, CEO of a Scottish vodka firm linked by police to organised crime, it's called Nero Vodka, raised her middle finger as she was walked out by armed Spanish cops. The pair appeared in court yesterday after spending two nights in police custody. Spanish police are yet to comment on Monday's arrests and are not expected to do so until later. But we can reveal former Rochdale doorman Johnny Morrissey, nicknamed Johnny Cash, when he ran a restaurant in Cork in the 1990s, was held on suspicion of crimes including money laundering after an operation led by Spanish cops and coordinated across two continents. Yesterday's court appearance in the holiday resort of Marbella to determine whether the couple should be granted bail was held behind closed doors as is customary in Spain. Morrissey's full name, John Francis Morrissey and his wife, were expected to be remanded in custody pending an ongoing criminal probe although court officials could not be reached for comment late yesterday afternoon to confirm this. The Irish passport holder, 62, was one of seven alleged Kinahan cartel members hit with sanctions in April and named by the US Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Controlled, OFAC, the US authority said of Morrissey, who attended Daniel Kinahan's wedding in Dubai in 2017, Johnny Morrissey has worked for the Kinahan Organised Crime Group for several years, including as an enforcer and facilitates international drug shipments from, for the organisation from South America. He is also involved in money laundering. He was included on the list alongside the likes of Daniel Kinahan, described in the same statement as playing an integral part in organising the supply of drugs in Ireland. His dad, Christopher Kinahan, and veteran Dub Dublin-born criminal Bernard Clancy. The other people named were Christopher Kinahan Jr., Daniel Kinahan's advisor and close confidant, Sean McGovern and Ian Dixon, who was arrested over the 2015 Costas Del Sol murder of Gary Hutch, but never charged. Nero Drinks Company Limited, the Glasgow-based vodka firm, which Scott's mum, Nicola Morrissey, runs with her husband, Johnny, was one of three companies included in the list and banned from trading in the United States. Johnny, who courted celebrities, including models and reality TV stars, as the ambassador of his wife's drink business, drinks business, 
fled Ireland more than 20 years ago after reportedly being involved in a bid to harm an officer from the Criminal Assets Bureau. Former CAB officer Felix McKenna, who earlier this year linked Morrissey to the attempt to intimidate or even kill a prominent Bureau officer before he left Ireland, having had more than €600,000 of cash and property seized, welcomed his, incl his inclusion in the US sanctions list in April. Speaking to an Irish Sunday newspaper, he said he fell into a group of criminals who left Ireland following the formation of the CAB and made a lot of money abroad and still makes a lot of money in the nar narcotics business. Hopefully these men are all incarcerated in the forthcoming years and locked away for a long time. Morrissey opened up a restaurant called Annalise after moving to Cork from England, where officials say he had gained a reputation as a hitman for gangsters. Morrissey is the first of the men named and sanctioned by the US Department um, of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control to face arrest since the list of the Kenahan Organised Crime Group 7 key players was made public. One well-placed source said last night, although he's the first, we don't expect him to be the last and are working on making sure others fall soon. So there you got it. Okay, the first public arrest of a key Kinahan figure, Johnny Morrissey. The jury's still out on the rest of them, though, and I remain convinced that Ian Dixon, Ian Thomas Dixon's flipped. And we're going to find out about that later, or they might not talk about it. Sean McGovern, no, I don't think he, maybe South America him. Christy Kinahan, where do I think he is? Barley. Christopher Kinahan, Jr. Barley. Daniel Kinahan, Kazakhstan, or Bali. Notice, um, did I say Bali? Did I say Mark Baker? The Semyon Mogilevich envoy in um, Bali. So now let's move on. What we got next? This is um, um, this is interesting one. A cousin and close confidant of Kinahan ally Ridwan Targi jailed in Morocco. His arrest came after extensive consultation between the Moroccan and Dutch governments. A cousin and close confidant of Dutch gang boss Ridouan Targi has been jailed in Morocco. Jailed F, 20 known, also known as Bole, was given six years behind bars. The National Public Prosecutor's Office said Jawad F. was recently sentenced to six years in prison for participating in a criminal drug organisation. He was arrested by Moroccan police in October on suspicion of involvement in the murder of a High Court judge's son in a case of mistaken identity. Jawad is considered a close confidant of Ridouan Targi. A leader of the notorious Mokro Mafia, Dutch media claimed Targi was behind the murder of well-known crime journalist Peter de Vries, who had been advising and acting as a confidant for a witness in the case against Targi when he was gunned down in Amsterdam in July of last year. <clears throat> According to well-informed sources in the criminal environment, Moroccan authorities believe the Dutch-born man arrested in Tetouan was involved in the murder of a high-ranking Moroccan judge's son in Marrakesh in November 2017. Court documents say that gunmen had been assigned to carry out the killing of Mustafa F., a successful drug smuggler and rival of Targi. However, they accidentally killed the judge's son, who was a 26-year-old medical student. According to reports, they mistook the young medical student for the target because he sat in the same chair as Mustafa F and he was dressed similarly. 
Moroccan authorities are still hunting for others involved in the 2017 killing. Jaywood's name is associated with several criminal cases according to criminal files and reportedly works as a handyman for criminals. A study of the Dutch Chamber of Commerce reveals that until a few years ago, Jaywood F., who was born in Breda in the Netherlands, was the owner of car rental companies in Nijmegen as well as the director of a financial firm. His arrest came after extensive consultation between the Moroccan and Dutch governments who are said to have collaborated very closely during the search for him. Investigations by the American Drug Enforcement Agency, DEA, established that Targi, who is alleged to have formed a European super mafia with Daniel Kinahan, as well as other senior criminals, was a prominent guest at Kinahan's wedding in Dubai in July 2017, while he was on the run from police in his own country. So now we're going to move on to a sinister story coming out of Limerick in Ireland, which we were talking about the simmer intentions over the summer. Will it fears, you know, will it looks like the, um, there could be a reigniting of the gang warfare in Limerick? And I really hope that that's not the case, but we'll have to see. Inside fresh Limerick gang war fears as rivals have access to serious weaponry and young dealers are warped on cocaine. It is more than a decade since the murderous Limerick gangs waged a bloody war in the city, but there are fears history is repeating itself. This week, Gardy stepped up armed patrols in area of the city as they tried to keep a lid on rising tensions among rival groups who are said to have access to serious weaponry. The recent upsurge in tensions involves young associates of rival gangs who are paranoid and erratic due to addictions to cocaine, sources said. Photographs shared on social media showed a convoy of guard vehicles on their way to carry out raids in St Mary's Park, a former stronghold of the Coloppi gang, on Tuesday after a number of serious and violent incidents. These include car windows being smashed and attempt to burn a car after tensions flared during a city soccer match. The rival groups, which are led by experienced senior drug dealers who previously feuded for a decade from 2000. In 2008, the capital of the Midwest was locked in a deadly spiral tit-for-tat killings culminating in the shooting of innocent rugby player Shane G. Ocken. Shane G. Ocken. He was mistaken for one of the gang leaders before an intensive campaign of in-your-face policing finally brought the hoods to heel. It's seen the worst figures such as vicious brothers Wayne and John Dundon either behind bars or neutralised. Later, the mobsters called a truce and concentrated on earning vast profits from selling heroin and cocaine. However, young males associated with the gangs have recently been involved in local clashes and verbal exchanges on social media, which have fueled tensions. Gardy gave visited Gardy have visited a number of individuals to deliver Gardy information messages, warning them that they are subject to threats to their lives. In the UK, it's called an Osman warning. A large Gardy contingent swooped on flashpoint areas on Tuesday in a show of strength and a bid to calm the situation. Gardy sources as well as local community activists say are that they are now concerned recent tensions could spill over and lead to further violence. The senior drug dealers see themselves as businessmen, if you will, but the younger lads are drug users as well as dealers and they are highly erratic, said a source. These younger guys don't care about jail. The difference between 
these guys and the older brigade is that they are so warped from cocaine, they are completely erratic. The older brigade don't want to go back to what it was like 20 years ago. They are businessmen now and they have moved on from all that. But all it takes is one act of violence, one person to be killed, and all bets are off then. Some of these lads have access to serious criminal connections and serious weaponry. That is the concern now. The younger members of the feuding families are winding each other up, and there is a, a realisation in, in the Guardi that this could potentially get quite serious. There was a lot of rage in St Mary's Park Tuesday and the Guardi had been keeping a presence in Moy Ross. The armed Guardi units are back around again, which is reassuring people and which is what you want to see happening. The presence in St Mary's Park the other day was a signal from Guardi to these young crews that they are not going back 15 to 20 years. The sources, the source said CCTV cameras, which have been strategically located in flashpoint areas around the gang's bases, are key for Guardi to keep a track of certain individuals. The cameras are so important because they are what keeps a lid on, on all of this. And we've all seen recent discussions about the legality of CCTV cameras and what impact they potentially have on civil liberties. But tell that to the people who were living in a war zone in Limerick 15 years ago. We would be back to square one if it wasn't for the cameras. We really would, and no one wants that. A Guardi spokes spokesman replied, The Guardi does not comment on ongoing investigations. <clears throat> the ongoing feud between drug gangs dating between the late 90s and late 2000s saw a turf war break out and 20 people killed. The feud involved the Keane and Colopi gangs from St Mary's Park, the McCarthy Ryans from Moiros, and the Dundon mob from the Balik Balikara Western. The feud abated when Gardy cracked down on the gangs after two members of the public who had no links to crime, were murdered by the Dundon McCarthy mob. They were rugby player and son, Shane Geogeechen, who was gunned down in a case of mistaken identity in 2008, and businessman Roy Collins, who was shot dead in 2009 after members of his family testified in a criminal trial against the leader of the, ga the Dundon gang, Wayne Dundon. So, let's just hope they can put a lid on it in Limerick. And certain people from um, Limerick, Moiros, Moiros, on holiday, maybe they should stay on holiday. Anyway, let's move on, right? And now we, we're going to go a little bit deeper on the uh, Limerick thing. Gardy issued threat warnings in Limerick as they probe gang link to road crash death. Gardy have been told to respond with haste to any calls to the homes of those who have been warned of the threats. Gardy are investigating if the death of a man in County Clare in a road collision on fr last Friday night is linked to a reignited feud in Limerick City. Multiple sources have said that a number of people were issued with the Gardy information message forms in the past 24 hours in Limerick, warning them that they are subject to a threat to their lives. Gardy across the county have also been told to respond with haste to any calls to addresses linked to the people who have been warned. Tyler Kelly died in an incident in Parteen, County Clare on Friday night. Investigators believe he was travelling in a car with a number of people with connections to the island area of Limerick City. It is thought his car may have come into contact with another vehicle associated with known criminals with connection to the northern suburbs of Lim Limerick City near, near Parteen. 
An innocent woman driving in the area was struck in the collision. She was not connected to any of the violence and was just driving home. Guardi are appealing for witnesses to the collision. They did not respond to specific queries um, regarding the claims of feuding. Morris Quinn Liven, a Sinn Féin TD in the city, called for calm and asked Guardi to increase their presence in various areas. I would call for a strong Guardi response in these areas. The Guardi have been around, but they need to step up some of their visibility in the area. People need to feel secure in their homes. This is an ongoing operation in one of the areas that needs to be increased and the people who are selling drugs need to be dealt with, he said. Although the latest outbreak of violence is understood not to involve the ex exact structure of the deadly feud of the early 2000s, there are fears of an escalation as it does involve people associated with similar groups. The much publicised publicized feud between McCarthy Dundon and Keane Colopy drug gangs resulted in the deaths of at least 20 people in the early 2000s. Huge amounts of Gardi resources were sent to Limerick City after the death of innocent men Roy Collins and Shane Giochen. They were killed by gunmen associated with the McCarthy Dundon gang. Collins was shot because his family had given evidence against the Dundon group and Giorgan was shot in a case of mistaken identity as the Dundon gang sought to shoot a man associated with the Keane Canopy gang. That gang feud was based around a number of areas with the Dundon McCarthy faction based in Moy Ross and Ballincora Western while the King Calopi gang was based in an area known as the island, with most members living in St Mary's Park. One of the key players in the most recent violence is a man who is closely associated, who is closely associated with violence in the past. He has issued threats on social media towards other people perceived to be in a separate gang. It has been learned that the death in Parteen follows a number of other minor incidents following an alleged assault at a football match in Limerick City in recent days. It is understood that the original assault involved two men, one aligned with a group based in the St Mary's Park area of the city and the other from Moy Ross. There is understood to be another incident involving cars near St Mary's Park, but Gardy have said there is no record of it being reported to them. Sources have said that tensions are constantly simmering in the background, but the recent outbreak is being taken more seriously by Gardy. A source said that the Guardi are monitoring the movements of known criminals and armed units have been uh, given specific instructions on how, in, in how to deal with the groups. In a statement, a Guardi spokesman said the Guardi does not comment on ongoing investigations. The Guardi does not comment on, confirm or deny any matters relating to security of any individuals. So again, let's just hope that that doesn't, you know, prove to be deadly. So we've got quite a lot going on. This is going to be, okay, our hostage episode 375. The Kinnahan takedown moves into another gear. Johnny Morrissey is arrested in Spain. Who is going to be next? And who has already flipped and is in custody being debriefed and is going to be a witness against Daniel Kinahan and the Kinahans. Well, from outside the tent, we know Darren Till has obviously flipped and become a witness because he was allowed in the US last weekend for the UFC. Tyson Fury, it right, looks like he's going to flip and give evidence against Daniel Kinahan once he knows that the Kinahans won't be able to issue a contract out on him or 
that he feels safer, and I believe Tyson Fury and his family are going to move to America permanently. And then we see where the rest of them turn up. Barley. Did I say barley? Anyway, Art Hostage, episode 375. Art Hostage, signing off.